Hello again all my uh, YouTube and internet friends. This is Patrick and it's after work. It's um, about quarter after five on a Wednesday evening. I uh, ran a little bit late today, but that's okay. And uh, everything's going pretty good right now. Uh, my caseload is pretty stable and I feel like I'm getting my work done and I'm pretty organized. And, uh, oh jeez. Cop behind me. Hang on one second, I'm gonna pull over. I don't think he's coming for me, but you never know. Yes! He was not coming for me. Excellent. Uh, where was I? Um, yeah, caseload's pretty stable. I'm getting my work done. I feel a lot more organized. Like, I'm, I'm really falling into the groove. Um, kind of getting into the routine of making sure I've got all the right information at the team meetings and getting all of my routine reoccurring tasks done and all that good stuff. School has turned out to be wicked easy uh, so far this semester. I've had, uh, like, I don't know. Ooh, what's this? Looks like... <laughs> Looks like I'm not getting home by this route. Oh, jeez. Alright. Um, I'll continue this thread of thought uh, after I figure out exactly what's going on. Everybody's turning around now. No, oh, not again. Remember what happened last time this happened? It was a 40 minute long video. <laughs> okay. Well, um, yeah, so anyway, school's pretty easy, and in my uh, philosophy, no, what was it? Uh, what is this class? Not philosophy and social ethics, it's uh, the individual and society, yes. The individual and society, I've gotten perfect 100% grades on the uh, two graded assignments so far. We're in week three now. And... Um, I did it by completely ignoring the topic question and not like really citing any sources, but just kind of like going off on whatever. I did all these comments like, oh great work, thanks for sharing. So yeah, that's a bullshit class. And then, um, you know, the Nursing 501 class, which I expected would be more difficult, I've gotten 100% on all of those uh, too. I think there's been three or four assignments uh, finished on that one. And, uh, you know, that requires a little bit more academic rigor. You know, I have to make references to transcripts of legislative hearings and, and things like that. So I have to do a little bit of research and dig around our websites and, uh, you know, come up with position statements and stuff like that. So it's a little more interesting in that it kind of, uh, it kind of shows me some like some direction like where like where to go here what kind of things to get uh, involved in at the higher levels of nursing which I guess is kind of the point of the class um, to kind of demonstrate that um, there is a lot going on uh, but it's a lot that's going on away from the bedside but it affects what's happening at the bedside so since I did fairly well as a student in like parliamentary procedures and being a delegate at a house of delegates and getting resolutions passed and stuff um, you know, it is something that is of interest to me because I was successful at it in the past. Um, so the work is kind of dry and it does kind of seem, you know, really low level. Um, but I'm, you know, writing my little position papers and getting good grades on them. I had to pick a topic, uh, today. I had to pick a topic yesterday for, um, my policy term paper, which is one of the two final projects. One of them is a policy analysis paper, and then the other one is uh, like a briefing letter or a letter to the editor or something of that nature. So for my policy analysis paper, I picked um, safe patient handling, which was not a topic any of the other students picked, but uh, there used to be like a federal, there used to be like federally mandated OSHA guidelines on like, you know, occupational safety about uh, you know, with regards to healthcare employment, making sure people are trained to uh, lift appropriately and, you know, use good body mechanics to prevent injuries. And in 2001, it was repealed by President Bush. So the American Nurses Association has been, you know, waging national and state level campaigns to get uh, 
uh, protections of this nature put into place. And many states have done so. Uh, I forget which ones, but I think it was only like uh, like around 15 states or 13 states, uh, one of those odd, odd number of teens, uh, that have put those kind of protections in place. And I don't think the state that I live in is one of them. So that seemed like a pretty ripe ground for analyzing who are the stakeholders and what is my role in all of this and, and all of that glorious BS. I don't think the paper will take me more than a couple hours to write, so of course I will hold off until the last minute. The briefing paper I'm a little more confused about. It's not really clear to me exactly what kind of thing I'm supposed to write. I'm going to go back into the uh, assigned texts and, and you know look at some examples and that kind of thing of uh, what a policy briefing paper would look like. It's only supposed to be one page long. It's supposed to be, I guess, like something you would hand to an important person, kind of like lobbying. Of course, I think lobbying is horrible, so of course they're going to train us all how to do it. And, you know, most people who know me personally know this about me, that I absolutely abhor politics um, of any kind, uh, especially the sort of dumbed-down, media-friendly political theater that has become so necessary to tell people what to think when those people don't have any time to actually educate themselves about the things that are going on. And uh, I find it horribly graded, uh, very, very annoying whenever it's, you know, on TV or radio or my news feeds or, you know, syndicated anywhere. Uh, I find it, um, I find it very annoying. Um, but the kind of, like, you know, higher level policy analysis and, like, the higher level politicking uh, seems a little more interesting to me if only because it's a method of taking direct action about things. And, um, and I've always liked arguing with people. I've always, you know, been pretty good at it. Yeah, looks like something's going down, huh? I did manage to circumvent that blockage, whatever was causing it. So, I'm in the clear. And there's a cop walking in the middle of the road. That's great. Just as the light turns green. Yeah, the cop standing in the middle of the road waves me on right as the light turned to green. That's great. Uh, now I'm on my way home. That's good. think of anything interesting clinically going on right now that I could talk about without divulging protected healthcare information. Um, everything seems like it's been pretty clear-cut lately. I feel like I know what's going on, uh, which is usually a sign that I'm overlooking something, so I'm uh, definitely soliciting the advice of my elders and betters and my uh, teammates to make sure I'm on the right path with a lot of this stuff. Um, it's very difficult to manage or supervise uh, care that other people are giving when you're only there, you know, like an hour a week or two hours a week or three hours a week or like one hour increments. Uh, it was a lot easier in the nursing home because I could stand there and watch what the people were doing whenever I was on the time that I'm responsible for. You know, it was a much different thing. Uh, and, you know, that would be something that I'd be responsible to do to supervise people and make sure they know what they're doing. But, um... It's a little bit harder when you're dealing with family members, um, because for one thing you can only suggest, you can't compel people to do anything, and then, um, the, uh, but then it gets even more complicated when private uh, caregivers are involved, and this was uh, one of my previous assignments in the policy class where we were talking about, uh, where I was talking about, we all had to pick a policy issue uh, to talk about to get us ready for the big term project. And I picked a House bill that died in committee uh, in the state of Connecticut in 2011 that uh, would have corrected a major liability gap that home care nurses face, which is this. Um, it's actually not allowed for a home care RN to document that he or she gave any instructions to a privately hired caregiver. Now this is uh, this is a huge conundrum to home care nurses because a lot of the times 
there's a privately hired caregiver because the family members are uh, either not able to be present or they're ill or incapacitated in some way. But the way theoretically it's supposed to work is that if I need to give any kind of training or instruction on how to do a particular task, any kind of teaching at all, I'm supposed to train the family member and then the family member then trains the private duty caregiver. Now for a lot of reasons, uh, this is very often uh, not possible or, or not practical or doesn't make any sense to do it. Uh, so the reality of home care nursing is that very often we do have to train the privately hired caregivers how to perform different tasks. And since all of these privately hired caregivers come with different levels of training and familiarity, it could be a whole bunch of different stuff. I might have to train a privately hired caregiver the correct way to turn and reposition somebody. I might have to train a caregiver the correct way to feed somebody who's dependent on somebody else for feeding. And, uh, you know, that kind of training, that kind of caregiver education is within my scope of practice. This is something I went to school for. Uh, training caregivers how to provide care if there's no nurse present. That's, you know, a big part of what nursing is, especially in home care. Uh, and, you know, the nursing shortage and stuff like that. I mean, how great would it be if everybody who was sick had their own personal licensed nurse to take care of all of their needs? But uh, the reality of the situation is that we have to delegate. So what this House bill would have done is it would have allowed home care RNs to train privately hired caregivers if they fully documented their training and had it co-signed by the caregiver. And, uh, you know, the bill explicitly stated that the RN who did the training would not be liable for any bad outcome if the privately hired caregiver failed to follow the instructions or did something that was outside their scope. So, of course, the scope has to be trained on, too, you know. And that, to me, seems really reasonable. It's exactly the same thing that we do with the family members. If we have to train them to do something, we document the training. And if there's a bad outcome because they didn't follow our instructions, it's not our fault, you know? Uh, but how the law currently stands in Connecticut is different. If I train... If I train a private caregiver and something bad happens because they didn't follow my instructions, I'm still liable for that, uh, which doesn't make any sense at all, and that is the liability gap uh, that I alluded to. And uh, a lot, you know, a lot of times there's no choice because the private caregiver is the only one who's there. Um, and uh, since home care is expanding in prevalence, it's really a necessary step. When I was doing some research for that assignment, I uh, came across, um, I forget the website address, but it was some kind of, uh, you know, national organization for home care, not home care nursing, but just home care in general. And some of the statistics on that website that were collected by the government were pretty amazing. Something like, something like a quarter, something like a quarter of our population takes care of somebody at home who's sick and homebound. That's a huge percentage of our population. And, uh, and other statistics that were equally alarming. Uh, in studies, I think it was the, I think it was the American Association of Retired Persons who did a lot of this research. Not the government, I think it was the AARP who did quite a bit of this. And, uh, people who were caregivers for people who were stuck at home Something like one in five of them said that they had the adequate instruction that they needed to do their job correctly. And, you know, taking care of somebody who's dependent is, uh, can be a, you know, a technically very demanding task. And it really makes sense to have, uh, you know, the guidance of a registered nurse in the case of somebody whose health is failing, their condition might not be stable. Um, these are the kind of situations uh, in which RNs can make themselves useful. So, you know, how it works out in reality is that the you know, RNs do actually train the private duty caregivers, we just don't document it, uh, which is problematic. We should be documenting everything that we do. But the way the law works, uh, we're not allowed to document this particular type of training. So uh, this House bill would have addressed that, 
uh, but it died in committee. I'm not exactly sure what happened. Uh, I followed the tracking on the state legislature page, and it just sort of dropped off the face of the earth after a while. And uh, all of the transcripts that addressed the bill, everybody had positive things to say about it. It was part of some kind of joint legislative task force of the home care nursing agencies and somebody in the government or something like that. I forget the number. I think it was Connecticut House Bill 6546. I think that was the one. You can look it up on the CT website. Uh, if you can figure out what happened to it, let me know, because I'm curious. I mean, the assignment's over. I got a perfect score on it. But, uh, I was not able to, deter to determine exactly what happened to it, because that was not within the scope of the assignment. And um, Although there are situations in which I go the extra mile... Uh, schoolwork is not one of them because you cannot get a higher grade than 100. If I could get a grade higher than 100, I would have. But no. Well, I think that's about it for now. I think that's enough. Only a 16 minute video today. That's not so bad. 1609, 1610, 1611. <clears throat> so I'm off to get a haircut. I've got a hair appointment with my favorite hairstylist. As you can see, I don't know if you can see. Let me turn on the light a little bit more. No, you still can't. Yeah, my hair is big right now. You know, I got big hair. So it's time to get rid of some of it. <clears throat> so next time you see me, I will have shorter hair. I hope you enjoy it.